Hi friends, let's fine tune GPT-40 vision with our own images in a custom output format. Before that, let's see how to use the pre-trained model as it is. And then we prepare the data, fine tune the pre-trained model and finally use the fine tune model. Now among these four steps, only preparing the training data requires a bit of work. But the other three steps, it's a standard APIs. We don't have to do much. Okay. All right. Let's import OpenAI client. So here I have an image URL. So we have an image of a car uh, with some damage uh, at the front. Okay. All right. So it's just like how we invoke the text uh, chat completion models, OpenAI. They have standardized the API uh, so that whether it is text or images or multimodal, uh, it's exactly the same. Okay, so we are using GPT-40 mini model. And then uh, if we have used OpenAI before, we have three roles, right? The system, the user and the assistant. When we invoke, we can provide the system and the user. So in this case, we are providing the user role along with the user content. Now for text only tasks, we generally provide the text or the user prompt uh, as the content. But when we use in a multimodal way, we have to specify the type of the content along with the actual content. Okay, so here we are saying the type is go going to be text and the text which is the text prompt, uh, we are basically asking what's in this image answer in one sentence. Okay, and then we still have more user content. The type is image URL and we provide the URL of the image. Now we can provide multiple images uh, as well. All right, max tokens, uh, this is the output token, just 100 and we invoke the model. Okay, so for the image we just saw, uh, the output is the image shows a gray sports car with significant front end damage parked on a bit surface, uh, which is exactly what the image shows. All right, but uh, we often have the images uh, locally or on some cloud storage, right? We may not have these URLs. So let's see how to make the inference uh, when we have a local image, okay? So it's very simple. All we need to do is just this base encode, uh, base 64 encode the image. So here we have a helper function. We read the content of the image and then we encode in this base 64 format, okay? Once we have that encoded image, uh, we can make an image URL uh, using this, okay? Then it's the exactly the same as what we saw before, but this time instead of having this HTTPS uh, uh, URL, this time we have this base64 encoded uh, uh, URL, all right? Uh, this is a different image and we have uh, uh, the output. Now let's see how to prepare the training data. Now just to make it interesting, let's say uh, we work at an automobile insurance company and we get these claims, uh, which include, let's say, damaged car images. We want to automatically assess the damage and also detect what parts, the severity level, etc. Okay, so for a given image, we are interested in three things. Which part is damaged, what type of damage it is, and the damage severity. Okay, so that we can automatically or quickly process uh, the claims. Now, so to train, we need examples. And we are going to prepare a JSON L file where we have one example per line. Okay, so here is a one example format. So we would have three roles. Okay, the system role and the system content. Now, for the system content, we can say something like you are an assistant that identify which parts of the car is damaged and the severity level, so on and so forth. And then we have the user role. We can give it a user prompt along with the images. Okay, and finally we would have the assistant role with the assistant answer or the response, okay? This is for training the data. Now, during the inference, we would not have the assistant role, right? That's the model act as an assistant and provide as its response, okay? So this is like the ground truth. All right, um, okay. So we need to provide at least 10 examples to fine tune uh, vision model. Now, here what I have done is, I have prepared some data or images, uh, about some 15 images. Now the ground truth, 
uh, depending on how we collected the data and how we annotate it, we might have a separate text file with the ground truth, or we might organize these uh, images into different folders based on uh, the ground truth. But here I have uh, renamed the images to have the ground truth uh, itself uh, in the name of the images. So for example, if you look at this image, uh, here we have uh, a car with bumper dent, uh, which is minor, okay? So that's how I uh, rename the images. First, the part of the car which has damaged and the type of the damage, is it a dent or a scratch or a shatter, things like that. And then is it minor or major, okay? So that's our ground truth. So we'll come back to this Pydantic, uh, we don't have to worry. Now we are going to create this JSON line file uh, for training the or fine tuning the model. So what we are doing is, we are going over all the images within that folder. So we read the, we read each image, we encode the image and create a URL out of it. And then using the image name, which contains which part of the car is damaged and the type of the damage and the severity of the damage. Okay. So we extract these three pieces of information from the name of the file. Now, as I said, this depends on how we annotate the data. We might have a separate text or JSON file with this information, or we might have structured the files in such a way that uh, the folder name uh, has uh, this information. Okay, all right. Then, so here we have one example. Now, the system, the system prompt, it typically does not change. And here we are saying, you are on a system that identify which part of the car is damaged, uh, so and so forth. Now, for each example, the user content change, but in our case, we'll keep the user content also the same, but that uh, need not be the case. But in general, the system content will remain uh, uh, the same. Okay, so the user content, we are saying, identify which part of the damage uh, is uh, damaged the severity level, and possible values for the damaged parts are bumper, door, glass. Now, this is just for the demo purpose, uh, which is very narrow scope, but uh, we can have a more exhaustive uh, list, uh, which a uh, more comprehensive list. And then the possible values for the damage type are dent, scratch, and shatter. And finally, the possible values for the CVRT level, minor and major. Again, depending on the client, the use case, etc., we might have maybe moderate, minor, uh, um, uh, major, or uh, written off, completely written off, things like that, right? And then we have the user content, which is uh, the image URL, which is coming from uh, this uh, base uh, 64 encoded one. All right. And finally, we have the assistant. Uh, here we have the ground truth which include these three pieces of information for each image, okay, which we are extracting from the image name itself. All right, we prepare the data, we write it to a JSON line file, and if you look at the content of the file, for example, here we have the first uh, record. Uh, so we have three roles, system, and the system prompt, the user, uh, the user text prompt, okay, with what information to extract, the three pieces of information, and then the user content, this is the content of our image in that uh, encoded format, okay? Now we can have uploaded these images to some cloud storage and provide the HTTPS URL as well. And finally, we have the assistant uh, with the content, uh, with the three pieces of information are the ground truth, okay? So in this case, the damaged part is door, damage type is scratch, and the severity is minor. Now this is the final example, uh, it's exactly uh, the same. Okay, so preparing the data is the most challenging part. I ran into a couple of issues. For example, now the content, uh, it has to be a string. Okay, so I was just using the ground truth, which is actually a string, but even this string needs to be enclosed uh, within these uh, quotes. Okay, and the other thing is, first I tried with just 10 examples, even though th those are local images, uh, the OpenAI said uh, it cannot use two images uh, for some issue. Uh, even though there is no issue with those images, okay? I said some compliance purpose, something like that, uh, which is not correct. So have more images, right? All right, once we have prepared the training data, then it's super easy. So we use the same client, OpenAI client, first to upload our training data to the, uh, to our account, okay? So uh, the purpose, uh, there are a set it to fine tune. Once we upload the file, uh, we get a file ID. So this is our file ID, okay? We, we see some of it on the UI as well. So we have uploaded the file successfully. And then we simply need to create a fine tuning job, okay? So the only thing we need to provide is uh, the file ID. That's why we need to keep track of the IDs, not the file names, okay? This is our file ID. And then 
the model. Now, GPT-40 mini, uh, it cannot be fine-tuned. So for the vision, uh, we can currently fine-tune only GPT-40, uh, this uh, version of the model, okay? So set the number of epochs, uh, again, for demo purpose, only one epoch. And if you want, we can provide a separate validation file, okay? So while the model is fine-tuned, we can track the scores on validation file also. All right, just run it. And then from the response ID, we will get uh, the fine tuning uh, job ID. Okay. Then using this list events, we can check uh, the status of the job. So initially it will be submitted. And once the job is completed, uh, it says uh, that the job has successfully completed. Okay. And we get lots of information like uh, uh, the model performance, so and so forth. Uh, for example, here, uh, I think jobs retrieve. Okay. So here we are uh, extracting all the fine tuning jobs and the results. Uh, which we see on the UI, uh, that file also we can access uh, using uh, this file ID. It's a metric. Uh, and finally, in order to use the model, it's exactly the same, but instead of using uh, the standard model, now we have a ID for our own model. So it is typically fine-tuned uh, the base model, GPT-40, and uh, the version, and then it's personal, and a random ID uh, created by uh, uh, the SDK. Okay, so again, I have an image, and the standard invocation with image URL, okay? And here is our response. Now, as you can see, the output contains what part of the car is damaged, and then the damage type, is it a dent or scratch or shorter, etc. And then the severity level, okay? Exactly what we have asked for. Now, coming to this Pydantic, now we know at the time of inference, uh, we can have a structured output by enforcing uh, this uh, some pydantic model right like uh, these three variables now i try to do that when creating the training data uh, but uh, it's not accepting okay so currently the fine tuning jobs uh, they don't accept uh, this response format uh, in the training uh, data all right now if you look at uh, the sd uh, the console so this is my i logged into my open ai account uh, this is how it looks like and maybe i'll show you on the storage we will see all our uh, training data files. So these these are multiple training data files I uploaded, but going to fine tuning jobs. Uh, so as I said, I failed a number of times. That's because of slight differences. Slight differences uh, are the issues in the training uh, file format, okay? Eventually the job got succeeded and this is how it looks like. So if you look at the messages, uh, the job is submitted, finally the job is completed, but we are more interested in this metrics. So here you will see the training loss. It started at some high value 1.6y and we trained it for only one epoch and during that epoch uh, within uh, the steps, it has reduced uh, substantially. It seems we can still improve the model performance. So maybe running for a couple of more epochs is a good idea. And since we haven't supplied validation file, uh, there is no validation loss, but we can supply a separate validation file as well. Okay, uh, that's all for this video. Thank you very much.